The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. In your best bib and tucker, or your oldest, most comfortable clothes. Well, either way, you're more than welcome at Art Linkletter's house party, where formalities are never observed, but where happiness is in evidence all around. Today and any Monday through Friday, meet new and interesting friends, and have yourself a high old time when Art Linkletter is your host on House Party. Remember, House Party is yours to hear five days a week over most of these stations. Dishes all done and Betsy's in bed. What do you want to do tonight? Should we ask someone over? Yeah, somebody over. I got my work cut out for me. Look at this stack of bills. Oh, dear. The aftermath of Christmas, huh? <laughs> hey, here's a letter addressed to you from La Parisienne. What's that? Oh, that new French restaurant. I wrote them. I never thought I'd hear from them. Let me, let me have it, dear. <laughs> got mixed up in the bills here, I guess. I must have picked it up. What are you writing them about? Oh, Mrs. Warfield took me to lunch there when her sister was in town. We had this wonderful cake for dessert. We were just crazy about it, and I asked the waiter about it, said I'd love to have the recipe, and he said to write to the chef, which I did. Hey, look at this bill from the music store. My gosh, what did we do, give everybody pianos this year? Oh, no, dear. We did give quite a few records. Oh, they sent the recipe. Listen, we are delighted that you enjoyed your lunch and that you were so especially pleased with our Gâteau Supreme. You are truly a connoisseur of the finest in French cuisine. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> what uh, they said about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goes on. We are enclosing the recipe you requested and also here with submitting the bill for the same. What? What's oh. the matter? Why, the, the, the chef at the Parisienne sent me the cake recipe, but he charged me for it. <laughs> no kidding. Why, he can't do that. <laughs> well, that's what you get, darling, trying to chisel in on a cook secret. You know how a fellow feels about his cooking. What's so funny about it? Well, I just think it's funny. It's a good joke on you. Men are the best cooks, and they don't like to just pass out their recipes for nothing. <laughs> Bill is for $35. <laughs> the 35 Let me see that letter. Let me see that letter. We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. Right down through the ages, man's greatest strength has lain in his ability to assimilate knowledge. As his store of knowledge has grown, his lifespan has increased, and living has become easier and a great deal more interesting, too. It's only natural, then, that modern man makes every effort to find out what is happening in his world. With network radio to serve him, he can be in on every important development when it's happening, no matter where it's happening. Add to that the extra advantages of having the services of the well-experienced, truth-loving reporters of CBS News at your disposal, and you can understand why, despite the perplexities of our times, life in the second half of the 20th century is so great an adventure. As long as things are happening, you can count on CBS News to ring you in on the excitement and keep you up to the minute with the facts. Today, tomorrow, and every day, make CBS News your window to the world and enjoy the adventure of your lifetime. Well, let me get the story straight. You went into this restaurant. Yes, and I had some cake for dessert, and it was just delicious, really. It just melted all right, in your right, mouth. All right, all right, all right. Never mind that So what happened? Well, I told the waiter I liked the cake and would certainly love to have the recipe, and he said to write a letter to the chef. Yeah? So I did. There's the recipe, and I most certainly would never have asked for it if I'd known he was going to charge me $35. Well, I'll just send the recipe back, that's Look, all. that doesn't help any. You could have copied it down before you sent it back. Well, yes, but I'm certainly not going to let anybody hold me up like this. $35? Just... $35. My $35. golly, they got a nerve. What recipe's worth $35? Well, apparently that one. What did they say when you called them? I didn't call them. I wrote them. Well, what'd you, what'd you say? Well, I said I'd been there, and I liked the cake and told the waiter, and he suggested I write the chef. 
Frankly, you know, I thought they'd be flattered to have someone ask well, for seems it. Seems to me it would have been better to phone them. Well, I didn't. Well, why didn't you? The waiter said to write them, that's why. Anyway, what, what difference does it make? Because they've got your request in writing, that's why. Well, it's always easier to write something like that. They, they all have French accents at the place, and you can't always understand that over the phone, you 35 know. Thirty-five bucks. Frances asked for a recipe at the English tea shop one time, and they were perfectly lovely to her. They gave it to well, her without any Well, the English tea trouble. shop's a bit different than this fancy French joint, clip joint anyhow. I don't know why you ever went there. I told you, Mrs. Warfield took me when her sister was in town, and Mrs. Warfield speaks French. Well, a lot of people speak French, but they eat in other restaurants, too. Well, she likes to talk to the waiter, I guess, and she said she gets so little practice anymore. And you know, it's kind of fun to go somewhere with someone and have them speak French, you yeah, know. Yeah, well, it's $35 worth of fun, apparently. Why don't we just send the recipe back, dear? Oh, listen, listen, listen. Let's seal the envelope back up again carefully and mark on the outside, oh, maybe something like, uh, uh, uh move, move to another city, address unknown, uh, something, what do you think? Darling, it is not as simple as that. I'm going to call him up. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. First, I ought to talk to Jack and make sure of our facts. Would Jack know? Oh, he's a lawyer. I tell you what, I'd, I'd rather not call him. Why don't we uh, ask him over tonight, maybe play a little bridge? You know, we've been meaning to ask him over for ages anyhow. Oh, I know it. That's a very good idea, yeah. dear. I'd love to see him. They yeah, love playing yeah, yeah. bridge. And, okay, and then in the course of the evening, I can just ask Jack to give me, you know, a little simple advice. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll call Jack. All right. But maybe uh, I should call Anne, you know, so it, it doesn't look funny. Well, why would it look funny? Well, you don't want Jack to think you're asking him over to get free legal advice, you know. That's oh, for Pete's sakes. I never even thought of such a thing. It's just like, just I'd like to get together with him, that's all. Haven't we been saying for ages we ought to ask Jack and Anne over? Yes, yes, well, we have to. I mean. Oh, I see. Yeah, sure. Well, you call Jack, and I'll take a mince pie out of the freezer. I'll heat uh, that up, and we can serve yeah. that. Is that all right? That'd be fine. Oh, yeah, fine. that's fine, I'll darling. That, and I'll get out the card table and the cards. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'll pass. Yeah, me too. Pass. So I told her, I said, well, if you're going to be in charge of the tickets, there ought to be some system. Honey, what are you some, doing? I'm telling Anne about the ticket committee. No, 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 darling. Show. What are you bidding? Oh, pass. So what did she say to you, Anne? What well, I saw her the next day, and of course she had everything mixed up. And I told her, I said, Anne, if you want to sell... Anne, if we're going to play bridge, let's play bridge, huh? Pass. Uh, four passes, new deal. We'll finish this rubber, then I think maybe we ought to be running along. I gotta be in court early in the morning. Well, you're not going before you have some coffee and pie. I'll go fix it. Come on with me, Anne. We can talk in the kitchen. Fine. Of course, I think the trouble with the whole ticket committee has been that Mrs. Richard wants to yes, do everything. Yes, I agree with you. You know, it must be an interesting life being a lawyer, huh? Well, it's like any other job, I guess. It's work. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to get away for some skiing. Anne and I were thinking of planning a weekend sometime. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Say, uh, Jack, speaking of being is a the lawyer... snow hasn't been really right for skiing. No, that's right. That's true, I guess. Say, listen, uh, before I forget, <laughs> rather interesting thing happened today. I thought you'd get a kick out of it, oh, you know. Something legal? Uh, no, well, no, not really. I mean, I just thought it was kind of funny. You know what I mean? Leave it to my wife. <laughs> She, she was at this French restaurant, La Parisienne, you know, down here. Uh -huh. And it seems she liked some cake that they had. And, well, she wrote the chef for the recipe. And by golly, if he didn't send it to her and sent her a bill. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah. 35 bucks. <laughs> Imagine the nerve. Uh, pretty expensive cake. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Well, I told her, I said, remind me to ask Jack when they're over here tonight. If You know, if that restaurant can do that. <laughs> she wrote them a letter? Uh, yeah. Did she offer to pay for the recipe? Uh, Oh, no, no, no. Well, I, I don't think she did. She... Honey? Yes? Oh, huh? darling, listen. Listen, listen I, I just remembered you told me to remind you to ask Jack about that silly letter yeah, that yes, I was I, I, I just asked oh. him. Oh, he yeah. just wondered if you'd offered to pay for the recipe. Oh, no, of course I... Well, oh, now, wait a minute. I think I did say something about if there were charges, I'd be glad to... You know, well, I mean, I just tacked it on, dear. I never dreamt that oh, they... Oh, for Pete's sakes. Well, what do you think, Jack? Well, I think you just bought yourself a mighty expensive cake, and uh, when you make it sometime, I'd like a piece of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wind the clock? Set the alarm? Yes. Now look, what's done is done. Let's forget about it and get to bed and get some sleep. I will not pay that restaurant any $35. Let them sue me. 
You heard Jack. If they sue, they'll win. Jack could be wrong. He graduated with honors from the Yale Law School. I feel just terrible. Did you look at this recipe? One dozen eggs it calls for. One dozen and a cup of butter. No. That doesn't sound like a recipe a man would think up and then charge $35 for it, too. Well, don't glare at me. Then you're a man. Thank you. If anyone ever says to me again that men are the best cooks, one dozen eggs and a cup of butter. And frankly, now that I think back, his frosting was much too sweet. Honey. Oh, well, it was. I just feel like sitting down and bawling. I really do. <laughs> well, we Sick live and learn. It. Can't get over it, the nerve of them. The nerve of that chef charging. Well, I was only being polite. Uh, just polite. Darling, look at it this way. It's his cake business. He studied for years to learn the art of cooking. Maybe this particular cake was his crowning glory, one of his specialties. The recipe belongs to him. He's got a right to sell it. Well, it still doesn't seem right to me. It just oh, doesn't. Oh, honey, look, we all make mistakes. Now forget it. That chef's a human being, too. You're awfully nice not to be mad at me, <laughs> dear. Well, I just look at it this way. Here's one time we're going to have our cake and eat it, too. Oh, honey. <laughs> We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. Wit and wisdom spark a fast-moving session of fun each Tuesday night on CBS Radio's intriguing game, The Last Word. Tomorrow, your host on The Last Word, Dr. Bergen Evans, invites you to match wits with columnist Max Lerner, novelist Mary McCarty, and critic John Mason Braun. Now, that's an invitation that's too good to turn down. For entertainment that will please both your IQ and your sense of humor, join us on most of these same stations tomorrow night when it's time for The Last Word. Breakfast! Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Boy, am I late this morning. I know. Betsy and I had our breakfast. I got her off to school and then I did up our dishes. What is this? It came in the morning mail. It seems to have been postmarked at midnight last night. It's from Jack. Yeah. Here's your orange juice, dear. Maybe. The worst time getting to sleep last night. And then I thought, well, you know, you're right. You're A really... bill for legal advice. What? What? Why, that... He's got the nerve to send me a bill for legal advice. Let me see it. How do you like that? Some friend. Look, he comes over here. He plays bridge with us. Enjoys our hospitality, eats our food, and because I ask him one little simple question, he sends me a bill for well, it. Well, he only charged you five dollars. It's the principal. Thought he was my friend. I told you when you called him, dear. The nerve. I, now, can listen, you imagine in, that? In, in a way, he's perfectly right. How is he right? You said yourself last night that the recipe was, was the chef's profession. He'd studied cooking. He had a right to charge. Look. Jack is a lawyer. That's his profession. He studied law. He has a right to charge. It's not the thing. same thing well, at all. After thing. all, there's such a thing as, as, as ethics. I don't think this is ethical. You know, Anne made a remark one time at Bridge Club. She said she was tired of people asking them over for dinner or calling them casually about nothing and then suddenly saying, Oh, by the way, Jack, I was wondering if you could give well, me a little advice. This, this is different. Well, I don't care. People do the same thing to their doctor friends, ask them over socially and then say, Say, Doc, I don't imagine it's anything, but I've had a little pain right here. I'm a friend of Jack's. Well, maybe we've been taking advantage of him, dear. Well, I don't... Few will ever be friends again. I mean, this is just downright embarrassing to well, do it. Well, it probably is for him, too, but he felt justified in doing something. And he only charged you five dollars. Wait a minute, honey. I know, I know. When you come home tonight, bring home five silver dollars. I'll make this expensive cake, and we'll put the five silver dollars on top of the frosting and send it over to Jack and Ann. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's see, what can we say on it? Well, very simple. Justitia omnibus. What's that mean? Justice to all. Oh, yes. How about that? <laughs> That's very clever. Oh, honey. You're so clever. How do you think of these? Oh, there's nothing. To, I just happen to think <laughs> well, of it. It's very you know. good. It really is. <laughs> The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Julie Lawrence as Anne, Dean Carlton as Jack and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Warren Sweeney inviting you to listen tomorrow to The Couple Next Door.